was because yeah, there is an identity with Israel, no, right, especially Martin after 9-11. When Palestinians were Martin Indy, can we can we bring this to a close, please? Nine eleven. Because this is going on a bit too long. Played to Israel's advantage. Well, can I add the one question thing? is what created the image? Yes, it's true. Americans overwhelmingly support Israelis against Palestinians. Is that because it reflects the natural record, or is it an image of Israel that's been created by the Israel lobby that accounts for those statistics? Let's take a simple example. Can we just go back to, before okay. you do, I want to go back to the um, question. She has more to say. Uh, the reason that I'm really interested in this question is because the U.S. claims to be the number one power in the world, and all of this decision affects other places in the world, like Afghanistan, Iraq, the Middle East, so on and so forth. So basically, for the U.S. to be biased or to be in favor of Israel, that would create some sort of an imbalance in the world, especially that all of this decision affects the other world. I actually have quite a lot of sympathy with that as a general proposition. But the problem is that focusing on the notion of an Israel lobby gets it almost, kind of preci gets it almost precisely wrong. I mean, Norman Finkelstein says that the reason is that people have a favorable impression of Israel in the United States is because, primarily because, mostly because, solely because of the work of an Israel lobby in kind of, in, in, he actually said, in whipping up controversy um, in order to sow confusion, which is an extraordinary kind of act of agency on behalf of anybody. It's unbelievable, actually. Um, but the reality is it wasn't the Israel lobby that made Egypt, Jordan, Syria dictatorships. I mean, and the Americans believe in democracy. They do. They might believe in it rather simple-mindedly. They might believe in the, the export in, uh, of it um, in a kind of simple-minded way. They may even close their minds to where it hasn't been exported and so on. But by and large, given the choice between democracy here and autocracy here, they're going to go for the democracy. And that's the fact. Now, you can say that Israel's a flawed Hamas, democracy. They? They're not but going you're... to take it from Hamas, are they? No, they're, they're, no, they're, 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 pro they're probably not going to take it from Hamas because, unfortunately, mm. it's quite difficult to take it from somebody who votes with the one hand and sends a suicide bomber to some place with another hand. And it is a problem. And it's a problem as much for the European countries as it is for the United States. Okay, so we're going to take a question from the gentleman at the back in the white shirt. My question is for the opposition. With Howard Dean unable to say in the first round of the democratic elections in 2004 that he favoured an even-handed approach towards the Israeli-Palestinian issue without being accused of hostility to Israel, and Barack Obama being forced to apologize for stating the very real truth that nobody is suffering more than the Palestinians, how can anyone claim that the debate is not being stifled, at least in the US? David Aronovich. I don't, I, look, all electorates have their pieties, uh, and all politicians are forced to play along with aspects of those pieties in this country as much as uh, in other countries. Um, and I don't see why you would put that down to the work of a some kind of, you know, some great, great super ego lobby. The problem is that the American people tend to see things in those terms. Now, of course, the lobbying organizations on the side of Israel will play their part in trying to make sure that's the case, as will lobbying organizations to a lesser extent, but also special interest organizations in this country and so on. But that doesn't force Barack Obama to do it. Um, um, but yes, it does. I'm having a well, little problem. Clearly with this constant invocation of what the American people believe without being first trying to examine why do they believe it, which seems to me an obvious preliminary question. So why do they believe it? Let's take some obvious examples. Said we're told in the American media that all these questions in the Israel-Palestine conflict, the question of borders, the question of settlements, the question of Jerusalem, we're told they're very complicated. They're so complicated they have to be put off to what are called the final status negotiations. Why don't people know these basic, uncontroversial facts? How do you account for that? And the only rational explanation is there is a lobby out there which is desperately trying to confuse people about the elementary uncontroversial record on the subject. People are
question from the front row. I think there's a slight danger that this debate is getting slightly conspiratorial, particularly from the speakers in the proposition. Um, you're talking about these big ideas and these sort of people lurking in the background. People have mentioned Barack Obama, who's of course running for president, and I wish him well, but he um, was asked in a question last week who he thought the United States' top ally was. And on that list, he did not include Israel, and he mentioned the EU is the most important partner for the United States in the future. Now, do you not think that setting the tone of the democratic primary race in the United States of America without Israel, without this huge lobby that you say is charging up the debate and trying to whip everybody up into thinking that that's the only real live issue, is evidence of the fact that people have actually moved on, that what you might have been saying would have been true 20 or 30 years ago, but certainly isn't today? I wish that were true. I absolutely wish that were true. I mean, it's, uh, it's nice that Barack Obama managed to make a speech about allies without mentioning Israel, but you can find his record is replete with um, once he started running for president, and um, I mean, long ago he sat at a dinner with Edward Said, but he's doing his best to make us forget that. He, um, yes, he, I mean, he actually went to the lengths of saying that he thought um, that the emergence of the unity government in, uh, in Palestine was actually a worrying development. Uh, I mean, he,